Hello, hello. Welcome to the fiscal year 25 Creative Start Project Grant recorded information session. We're so happy that you have joined us. So we'll begin with just a little recorded info session housekeeping um, so that you can easily use this video anytime you need to. Uh, we just want to point out two things to please select the preferred screen size and you can find that in the lower right corner of your video player as well as um, our closed captioning. You can click to enable the auto-generated closed captioning and that's just located in the lower right corner of your video player. Uh, we have a very brief agenda today focused on meeting our grant team, reviewing the grant guidelines and support, and then navigating submittable where the application is. Meet the Creative Start grant team. Hi. So we have Alexa Sarah, and she is the AIE project manager, manager and she can be reached at alexis.sarah at arts.wa.gov. Um, email is best to contact us. And then, Kalei, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Aloha, I'm Kalei. I am the AIE Program Coordinator. And I'm Desiree. Uh, I am the AIE Admin Assistant. I support a lot of our grant work and other programs we have going on in arts and education. Thank you. From here, we're jumping over to the online submittable application process. So I'm going to show this next session that Desiree is going to speak on for guidelines. So this is what you see when you first uh, click on our application link on our arts.law um, website, and it'll take you to this page and it'll tell you a little bit about our Creative Start Project grant um, and what it supports and what kind of projects that it supports. Uh, we have two different funding requests um, based on single site or multi-site. Um, we pointed out a few um, important key dates. Uh, the application is due by February the 23rd, and the filming of this is February the 9th. Um, then we go over eligibility for folks, uh, depending on what kind of organization. So it has to be a Washington State um, based either Head Start, ECAP Public School, School District, uh, ESD, Tribal State or uh, any other government agency or nonprofit agency with a 501c3 standard. Um, if you're unsure of uh, if your project meets eligibility, you are more than welcome to reach out to any of the Creative Start Grant team and we'll be happy to support and navigate that um, with you. And then again, um, based on eligibility for what type of project uh, that you're focused on, um, we have in the beginning, we have main criteria that meet eligible projects. So it focuses on pre-K, grade three, students, families, and educators, projects that focus on arts integration, teaching and learning. Uh, we have in-school and or out-of-school projects that increase public access to arts integration, and then the sequential arts learning projects. Again, if you're unsure of where your project lands, don't hesitate to email us. We are more than happy to support you. We want you to apply. Um, we'll look a little bit at the screen for eligibility and uh, you'll be evaluated by a grant panel of five um, criteria. And you can see our criteria is based in one, arts integration, two, project design, um, three, educator and artist support, four, community and family engagement, and five, plan for um, access. So when panelists evaluate your application, they're looking for those five pieces of criteria within the application and how it's presented. Um, so we really, really stick to the guidelines presented here. So it's very important um, that that's what it's based on the evaluation for. Um, so what is required to apply? We have a couple different pieces. Um, the first is going to be two letters of support um, and commitment. You'll need a 
statement wide vendor number, uh, which is how you get paid. The SWV number is how Washington State pays um, grantees. And then you'll need a UEI, unique identifier, um, or SAM. And all um, organizations must have this uh, to receive grant funds from the state. Um, so once you have those big pieces, uh, you can begin your application. You can begin at any time, but you must have those pieces when you submit those applications. Um, we'll go over general grant policies um, with payments, documentation, and a final report. So payments uh, will be initiated after the recipient provides and completes approved deliverables and signs their invoice form so that we can get you paid. Uh, documentation, it's very important that we have all of our grantees um, track all of their expenses and keep uh, clear and appropriate records. Um, and then our last piece is final reports, and that is due July 31st, 2025. Um, and that's where you'll fill out a final report and submit it to us. Um, because grants are based in state and federal funding, we have um, funding requirements that we must adhere to, and that's what we need that final report submitted with that information. Just below that, we have our use of our slot fund. Um, we have examples of what we do fund and what we don't. Um, I'll go ahead and let you guys review that, but it's really important um, that you make sure that your project expenses are aligned with those use of fund requirements. Um, material fees are covered by our SPOG grant funds, but they cannot exceed $5,000. Um, but we encourage you to take some time to really look at these uh, examples. Just below that, we have guidelines and support documents, um, which you can also find on our OTSWA website. So we have uh, a printable version of our project grant guidelines. Um, so you can share with collaborators as well as an outline of the application. So you can print it out and work on it um, and then come back to the online application to complete it. And then we have a submittable FAQ just to help um, navigate folks um, within the application process on Submittable. Uh, it's very helpful for first-time users um, just to get used to the application. Below we have some more um, information on uh, the application and the process. I'll point out if you have any questions or um, there are any challenges along the way, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, Alexis or myself, um, we're happy to help you. As you go, um, email is best, and you can find our email here as well as on the Arts Law website. Um, I'll go ahead and let Clay walk us through a little bit of the application. Mm -hmm. Great, we have some tips for navigating submittable, uh, many of which are found in that submittable FAQ document that Desiree had pointed out. But here are some we want to call out. Please save your work as you go. There is a save draft button at the bottom of your screen when you're in the application. The application is on a single page, so you'll have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen. Save often, anytime you're about to take a break uh, or after you're answering questions, just so you don't lose data. There's an option to collaborate with your team members. It's gonna be when you're in the application on the top right-hand corner of your screen an opportunity to invite collaborators. So you'll just click on that button and enter the email addresses of your team members to send them a link. And that way you all can work in the same application. Required questions, there are many that, or most of the questions you encounter are required. So you'll see a little red asterisk at the end of each notifying you that they are required. If you do skip them and try to submit your application, it will notify you that a required answer has not been received. And then submitting, similar to Save Draft, there will be a submit button at the bottom of your screen. You only want to cl click on that when you are complete with your application. We suggest doing completing your application be well before the February 23rd deadline and that's 5 p.m. on February 23rd, just so that if anything is amiss with your application, some of the documents you uploaded aren't readable or are corrupt in the upload process, 
we're able to help you with that, but um, only with enough time before the deadline. Otherwise the deadline is firm. <laughs> print or download, you may print or download your application under personal submissions in your submittable account, which we highly recommend to keep all of those documents saved in a place that's accessible by the pertinent staff on your team. And again, as Desiree mentioned, if you have questions, please reach out to Alexis, Sarah, or to Desiree Jean. Now, the first piece that you're going to see down here is entering your organization's either EIN number or your UEI. Every organization that is eligible um, for applying to this grant will typically have an EIN already. And so that's what you will enter here. Once you enter your EIN, you can click search organizations and your organization should pop there. Or you can submit your UEI if you already have it. Choose your organization and it'll take you to this eligibility form, which is essentially a quiz based on what Desiree had mentioned of de defining who is eligible for this project. Please answer the questions according to your organization. One that might be tricky we want to call out is that we um, might define for-profit political or advocacy organization differently than from what an education service district might uh, define themselves as. However, if you are an education service district, please select no for this question. Moving on, another one we wanted to call out is if your learning project is tuition-based. It is completely fine if you are tuition-based, but it will pop up additional questions asking if your project includes a no cost or low cost option, which is a requirement, an eligibility requirement for this grant. So again, answer these questions accordingly. If it's determined that you are not eligible for the grant, it will notify you and saying, we're sorry, you're not eligible. Please look for other arts law grants. Um, if you find that that is an error or you're unsure what happened in the process, again, reach out. But you're going to submit the form and it'll say, congratulations, you're eligible and it will take you to -da, the actual application itself and the final form on submittable um, in this process. So you're gonna start just with your organization information who is applying for this grant, select as needed. We wanna call out, if you select that you are a public school, the next information that's gonna actually pop up is information requesting from your, or about your school district. Reason being, this is who we're going to contract with if your school is awarded this grant for your program, just because the school district is who will be directly receiving the money um, on your behalf, the funds. So we will have to list your school district name, the school district's physical address, and so forth on the contract. And then you as a public school or all the other eligible organizations will be just simply in putting your information here. And we're going to scroll through this contact information, just a call out here, authorizing official is the person who is designated and has the um, official duties to sign contracts, as well as sign invoices to receive funds on behalf of the organization. So if you are a public school, that will again be someone specifically from your school district, often from the budgeting or accounting uh, team in your school district. So definitely include that there, but all else, the grant contract contact is going to be someone from your organization. Oftentimes the grant contact is the grant writer who is filling this out on submittable. And then if you have a project coordinator who is different from the grant contract contact, <laughs> then you can enter their information. Organization identifiers, these are the numbers that Desiree was speaking to. If you don't have them or you're not sure, there will be more information that pops up for you for the SWV number, for UEI on how to obtain those um, with helpful links. Beep, beep, beep. Please read through on our ADA compliance attestation here. To ensure that your organization is working for its accessibility. Project information. Now we're talking specifically about your project. Please include the grant title here. Desiree had mentioned there's two different types of funding for this grant. 
either at a single location, single site, or a multi-site. And that will change the funding. At a single site, it's 5,000 to 10,000. And at a multi-site, it's 10,000 to 15,000 as your grant request here. It will also change what information you include in this lovely table here. <laughs> so depending on the size of your screen, this table can look differently when you're actually in the application itself. So I wanted to call out, you may need to use the scroll function because there's sub, there's totals at the bottom as well as right and left. If you click on these little oops, arrows here, it'll expand the table. And again, depending on your screen size, you might still have to scroll in different but enter your lo each location and these this information for each level, uh, grade level students that you're serving. And you're gonna X out of that to return back to the rest of the application and enter a summary about your project, a snapshot. Every, nearly every question will also have a brief description elaborating on what you need to do for each. Now we're headed into narrative questions. These are referring to those five scoring criteria that Desiree had mentioned that the panel will continuously look back to when they are scoring individual grant applications. So the first is arts integrated learning. Um, many of these five areas will be comprised of both multiple choice as well as a short answer yeah, narrative. We wanted to call out here in arts integrated learning, what art discipline or multiple disciplines are you focusing on for your project? We wanna reiterate that you do not have to select all of these. And in fact, we might not recommend doing that because again, we want to show the panelists in your project that you are very focused and that you can com communicate clearly about this project but do select which are applicable, what you're working on. Similarly for the non-arts curriculum area that you're integrating with. Learning standards, please select all that apply. Our grant panelists are often comprised of um, folks with education background, background with learning with, uh, background with working with young learners, and so are often familiar with many, if not all of these learning standards. And here is that short answer to explain and describe what, what your choices are. The second criteria is project design. When will your project take place? We just have to make sure that is within the grant contract period, starting and finishing within or after July 1st, 2024, and before June 30th, 2024. And that's the here is another ex, uh, table. It is our project expense table. Again, you might want to use these little arrows to pop these out. And the funny thing about tables and submittable is that you cannot add additional lines. You, these are the only rows you are able to work with. So do so to the best of your ability. We put in categories for expenses, but if they don't quite fit your budget sheet that you created or that your accounting team created for this project, we do have an other, but we just want you to work with it to the best of your ability. Okay. And so if we wanted to put in teaching artists as an expense here, and the total for all your teaching artists was $20,000, which is great. Um, that does exceed, you know, how much funds you would get from this grant, but perhaps you wanted to spread the funds from the grant across different expense lines, that is completely fine too. So maybe just 5,000 of it is going to come from what's going to be covered by this grant. Okay, And you do that line by line. We want to see the whole of this project, even if it is going to add up to more than what the grant would cover, okay? Just so that panelists can see the feasibility of this project. And then in the funds total down here, once you have all the lines added up, this should equal the amount that you requested for your grant. So if there was like another line here 
um, and you originally requested $15,000 calculation. Does that make sense? If you press this X, it will return you back to the application and it will save your information. Again, save your draft at this point. That is a difficult one to enter. You recognize that. Project income table, very similar process, but now through on the other side of your project of what it funds you are receiving. And some organizations might not be receiving funds in different ways, but please fill this out to the best of your ability. Uh, we did already put this Artswa grant, this Creative Start grant in here, and we put in no for you on whether this grant is confirmed. Or not. So if you have other grants that you're applying for, please list them here. We want to call out that you are not able to, however, use two or, or more than a single Artswa grant for a single project. So if you are applying for a grants to organization and different program grant at Artswa, it may not be applied to this same project. So you will only have one Artswa grant listed. Right, and then it will total it at the very bottom for you. Press that X and it minimizes the income table. And there's a little bit of attestation again that you will not have other arts while well grants applicable to the same a opportunity to explain more. Maybe we didn't have enough lines on our table. Maybe there's something you wanted to clarify for us. And that's where you can do it here. And then here is where you can do a bulleted point of your timeline. Maybe this is what you're doing every quarter or every month and ex explaining the story behind all of that information that you just uh, submitted for your expenses. And your the third criteria is educator and artist support. It is also something that's usually illustrated in your budget section, but this is your opportunity to explain that here um, because numbers aren't the entire story. And the panelists like to see the story. Four, community and in family engagement. So please select the um, focused audiences that you are individually reaching out to and serving through this project. This piece here I wanted to note might be confusing language. This language was taken from the NEA report of what they're looking for in and tracking engagement, intentional engagement with projects that are receiving funds in this manner. So we want to know which, if any, specific community groups will comprise 25% or more of the population that will engage in learning opportunities through this project. There is a list of many demographic communities here, but it, of course, if the community you're serving is not listed, please select other and it will have an opportunity for you to put that community there. But at the very top, there is an answer you can select that no single group makes up more than 25% of the population you're intentionally engaging with. And what that could mean is if you are engaging with 10 of these listed communities, which is fabulous, and each of them make up about 10% of your audience, then equaling to 100% of your audience, then you would select no single group makes up more than 25%. But if you're intentionally engaging a specific community and you're like, yes, they're going to make up like 50%, then you're going to select that community. You know, and unselect that one, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> okay, great. Moving on to our last Criteria is plans for accessibility. Please select up to three strategic efforts. This will not limit your selection to three automatically. So please be um, aware to select the three that you are focusing on most with this project. And as always, if this, if your effort that you're intentionally engaging with is not listed, please use other and enter it here. And then again, tell that story story about what you have selected and how your project um, supports that selection. And then moving into our final piece, your two supporting documents. 
that Desiree had mentioned as a part of what's required for the application, please submit two different letters that demonstrates uh, awareness of and commitment to this project. We have examples here of what letter number one could be from. And oftentimes it could be organizational leadership, but please do have that be different from the person or the people who are working on this specific application or oftentimes the grant panelists would like to see other collaborators commit to this project or at least be aware of this project. Optional, is there anything else you'd like to tell that maybe you weren't able to illustrate that you find very significant to your project and why it should be funded? And then how'd you hear about this grant to me? And like we mentioned earlier, you had to scroll all, you had to scroll all the way down to find the save draft button. I can't save a draft because, yeah. Uh, that's why it's not selectable or the submit form. And that is your application. If you have any questions, Desiree will walk you through what you could possibly do about that. Yes, questions, questions. We love questions. Um, if you have any at all or you get back um, in the middle of your application, please, please do reach out. We really want to support you. Um, you can reach us by email. Email is the best. Um, and we will get back to you and try to help you um, with whatever you're stuck on. Um, we are very, very happy to help. So email, please. Alexis, play yourself. We are here. Thank you so, so much for joining us.